Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to look at a natural draft cooling tower. I'm going to show you all of the main components, then we'll look at how it works, and then we'll look at some of its design features. As you can see, we've got a natural draft cooling tower in front of us now, and we can see that the design is very unique. They have a very unique shape. If you ever drive past one or if you see one when you're out and about, then you'll notice that they have this slim middle body and it becomes gradually wider at the top and wider at the base. You'll often see drift coming out of the top of natural draft cooling towers. It actually looks like smoke but it's actually just evaporated cooling water. The diameter of the base itself may be up to 100 meters, and sometimes they'll be up to 200 meters in height. Typical construction materials for natural draft cooling towers include steel and reinforced concrete. Typically, you're going to see them next to thermal power stations, for example, coal-fired power stations and nuclear power stations. And that is simply because natural draft cooling towers are very expensive to construct and they're only ever used where you have a large cooling requirement over a very long period of time, for example 30 years. You will not see these towers being built and being put into service for only two or three years, it just doesn't make economic sense. But what are they actually doing? What is this particular tower doing and why don't we use smaller cooling towers instead. But what the cooling tower is doing, it allows us to send cooler water back to a power station and the cooler water is sucked from the basin. That is this area here. And the cool water is sucked through this hole. You can actually see it. That is the hole here. And it's going to be sucked out of the basin usually by centrifugal pumps and it's going to pass through here, come out of this hole, go to the centrifugal pumps, be pumped to the power station and then we're going to heat the water up and the water is going to come back from the power station and it's actually going to come into this pipe here and return to the cooling tower. The reason we draw cool water out of the cooling tower basin is because we use the water to cool steam that drops out the bottom of the steam turbine into an area known as the condenser. When we cool the steam, it condenses, and we can then take this condensate and pump it back to the boiler in order for it to be turned to steam again. So flowing through the condenser pipes is the cool water from the cooling tower. It cools the steam, the steam temperature drops, it turns to condensate and the cooling tower water absorbs some of that heat and when we return the cooling tower water back to the cooling tower, the temperature is higher than when it left out of the basin. Because we've absorbed some of the heat and the temperature now is higher, we need to cool the water down in order that we can have a continuous process where we draw water out of the basin and send it to the power plant. If we didn't cool the cooling tower water down, then the temperature of the cooling tower water would gradually increase. Now we don't want this because if that occurs, then the steam from the steam turbine will no longer condense as quickly. And that means we're gonna get an overall drop in efficiency for the whole power station. We need to be able to condense that steam and turn it into condensate in order that we can pump it back to the boiler. So how do we cool down the water? Well, the water is returned and it passes to this pipe here. And as we can see, there is actually a distribution manifold. I'll just take the angle from the top. And we can see we have a series of pipes here. We have one main ring that goes around the outside. Just come across. So here is the main ring. Goes around the entire cooling tower. And from the main ring, we have these smaller distribution manifolds and the water will flow into all of these pipes. Once we've charged all of these pipes, we're going to pass the water through spray nozzles. 
We're actually at the distribution deck at the moment. And it's called the distribution deck because this is where we distribute the water. Let's just drop down so we can see the nozzles. You can actually see there are quite a lot of nozzles. I'll zoom in and try and get a better angle so that we can have a look at one. So the water is going to drop out of the pipe. It's going to impact as it comes down on the nozzle here and we're going to get a circular spray pattern. So the circular spray pattern is going to spray all over here and each one of these nozzles is going to be doing the same job and the water then drops down onto an area that we call the fill. Now this particular fill is known as a thin film fill and the fill is essentially a heat exchanger. It's called a thin film fill because the water drops into each of these hexagonal holes and then drips down in a thin film of water all the way through the fill until it comes out of the base. Let's zoom out so we can see that. The base of the fill or the underside is here. You can see it still has this hexagonal shape. The water will then drop down and it's going to drop into the lower basin. The basin is also referred to as the reservoir. Once the water drops into the basin, its temperature has reduced. So I hope you now know how a natural draft cooling tower works. If you want to learn more about cooling towers, then check out our four hour long introduction to cooling towers course. You can find a link to that in the video description area. If you want to support the YouTube channel, then please do subscribe. And feel free to like or share this video on social media. It really does help us out. And we're very grateful to you if you do that. Thanks very much for your time.